Marie and I, we decided to do something different this time. We're not going to answer a bunch of um, behavioral questions and stuff like that, but we wanted to kind of like analyze the position uh, because a lot of people who are looking at the job description at the positions, sometimes they just so vague and uh, ambiguous, like people don't know what's asked of them. And um, Marie uh, agreed with me to uh, go over the job description of a, uh, of a of a position which is a b2b marketer marketing manager um, and uh, let's do this let's start the qualifications are six plus years on hands on technical experience uh, understand in-depth uh, network security this is for cisco by the way uh, good command uh, over english uh, written english bachelor degree and previous knowledge uh, of the networking industry so um, the first line says what you'll do. Become a specialist in all things related to network security at Meraki through hands-on experience setting up products in a lab environment. So what does it mean? <laughs> Basically, even if you don't um, need to become a technical expert in network security and know how, you know, things actually work, you still need to understand what it is. And because when you will be developing marketing materials, uh, messaging, positioning, um, telling about this offer to your stakeholders within the company, your partners, your external audiences, you need to understand what it is that you're talking about. So basically what this means that you will um, become familiar with the offer, with the network security space, um, competitors, um, the industry, and things like that. So basically um, that's... And when it says hands-on experience setting up products in a lab environment. Um, so this specific solution, so Meraki is actually focused on... Um, a small to mid businesses, I believe. Uh, so the, the audience is a little, well, is a lot different. Is the, the audience is different. Um, this particular position probably requires, um, you know, watching someone set up products in a lab environment and understanding how um, Cisco would come into the customer site and, um, you know, implement this solution on site. Mm -hmm. So basically that says that you don't have to have this, this experience, it can be taught uh, at the company. Right, so when it comes to your job search, uh, your uh, job search posts will be divided into what you will be doing and then what you need to know to, to be considered to get hired, right? And this section is what you'll do. Um, so you don't you don't need to be um, a network security expert in any regard unless it's required. But if someone who has network security experience also applies, they will get prioritized. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move to the next one. Understand and share perspective uh, on the competitive landscape. Um, so that kind of goes in line with bullet number one. Uh, so basically through understanding what, uh, what offer your marketing, uh, you will understand not only what your company offers, but what's being offered in the market and how you rate against competitors. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of talks about the analytical skills, right? You have to be analytical in order to... Right. Uh, compare the the landscapes. Mm -hmm. Distill and communicate complex information for sales, marketing, and uh, customers. So when you're basically looking after a certain product, if you're a product marketer, you need to work with um, the um, the engineers who create this product. Um, understand how it works. Then you need to work with marketing. Um, who creates um, materials, who um, 
com communicates this, these materials through the channels, then you need to work with the sales team to understand what happens in the field when they um, you know, meet the customer and try to you know, sell this offer. So being able, so when you become bullet number one and number two, when you become an expert um, in network security, understand um, the, the area, you need to bring all that knowledge when you communicate to other departments. So they are looking for your communication skills, right? And uh, so what types of questions they may ask you to test your communication skills? And what tools do you think are, uh, you know, should be mastered for, in order to be, for you to be a great communicator? Mm -hmm. uh, so they might ask, um, trying to see how to frame this. Um, can you give me an example of a time where you had to explain a technical concept to a non-technical audience? Another example of a question could be, can you give me an example where you had to mm, collaborate cross-functionally um, I'll stop here <laughs> when you had to collaborate cross-functionally and how you did it. Um, so one thing is to, it, you know, it, it's a skill to be able to uh, understand highly technical people who may be absolutely amazing at building things and they, they will tell you, I just build this wonderful box but your customer doesn't care about this box, whether it's, you know, flat or black or red, they care about what it, what it does to you, for you. And you need to be able to kind of translate that. Uh, when it comes to cross-functional collaboration um, is how, you know, do people listen to you? Are you able to get your point across? Um, in this time and age, I anticipate that there will be a lot of questions. How can you, um, how do you think you can collaborate effectively um, remotely? Because it's also a skill, um, especially when people live in different time zones, um, and you know everything that's um, you know integrated into what's happening right now. Um, you know some people are stuck with their kids and they can't even you know they hardly can do their jobs. And when yeah, <laughs> you and everyone else, <laughs> and when they're just trying to keep their bare minimum alive, um, and you're coming in here with this, I have an amazing idea. Let's do this. And how, how effectively can you sell your idea and, you know, inspire other people to get things done? So that's, you know, leadership, communication, collaboration involved. Um, are you able to be a great uh, teamwork player? And, you know, if uh, often, um, mostly always rather than um, not, Pro the results of your project depend on multiple people. And in the end, your management, your stakeholders will, will just care, you know, did it happen or did it not happen? And if one of, those, one of your team members, um, you know, something happens, they have to go get their sick kid from daycare or something like that you need to be able to step in or you need to be able to delegate this to someone else quickly. So you need to recognize strengths in different people and know how to, you know, move all these pieces together. Are you able to sacrifice your own time and step in for someone else? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, yeah. So communication skills are important in this uh, bullet point. So the next question is to work with PM to craft messaging for the Maraca small business uh, products. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to messaging, basically uh, what is meant 
And product managers are usually on the more technical side uh, of the business. So they are, so for the purposes of simplification, I'm going to bucket them into like engineers, product managers, people who understand the technicalities of the product. So you would work with them um, to, so you take a messaging template, your company may or may not have it, you may need to develop it. Um, to tease out information out of the technical people of um, what this product is, what it does, uh, how it ranks against competitors, uh, what's the uniqueness about it, what's the value proposition, uh, what are what's the unique selling point. And then you can you set the stage. So here's what's going on in the world. Here's how, here are the challenges that we're trying to sol solve. So uh, in a nutshell, you, uh, you put all that in the messaging framework. And that messaging framework becomes one source of truth for all marketing efforts. So when you need to create different marketing collateral pieces, you or the extended marketing team or the, or the agency always go back to that document. And that way your messaging stays um, consistent across all of your marketing efforts. And then, you know, a good idea maybe to create, um, you know, a 25 word description of your product, a 50 word description, a hundred word description so that, you know, when the need arises, you can quickly insert uh, these pieces into whatever you need to do. So is it like a code sheet for, for marketing products? Um, you can, you can look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, so the next question is deliver technical uh, product feedback to stakeholders. Your stakeholders are multiple. Your internal stakeholders are uh, all the people that you work with. So everyone who we have just mentioned. Uh, your stakeholders, um, kind of indirect stakeholders, are your customers. So maybe you're running a customer survey and or you're working with sales who are also your stakeholders in a way to understand um, you know, the experience with this product. Mm -hmm. And then you know, you're bringing all of that information back and you're communicating it to, so say you talk to sales and the sales said, hey, the sales enablement materials that your marketing team provided are not resonating with the customers. Um, let's revise that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of what's what's meant. Mm -hmm. So and uh, delivering the feedback is it does it mean you have to give a presentation? Is it just uh, how do you provide the feedback? Um, could be anyway. Mm -hmm. It could be um, a formal presentation. Mm -hmm. So say you ran that formal customer survey for a number of quarters and you need to uh, formally present that to your executive team and say, hey, hey the, uh, you know, what we're doing is not working. Um, here's why we, we ran this survey uh, and what's the call to action? What do you want? Do you need more money to run, to create more collateral? Do you need to whatever else you need? The, what's important in here is that your presentation skills so probably that's what they want to hear from you. Yes, you need to be able, and that's, you know, communication presentation skills. You need to know how to um, make a business case for what you're trying to do. And if you're asking for something, especially, uh, you need to, uh, you know, back it up with something. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, structure your thoughts. Um, so that kind of goes into presentation. And... Um, you know, just the, the overall idea of, you know, presenting and your public speaking rather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Public speaking. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's the one. Yeah. Okay. Let's move to the next one. Be a trusted technical advisor and work with the wider marketing team to continue and validate content for campaigns. So in a nutshell, everything that I've already told you from you know bullet one to three maybe this is this kind of sums up what you'll be doing mm -hmm. you'll be working cross-functionally you'll be looking at what your product does 
uh, creating messaging blocks um, and identifying opportunities to promote your offer. Uh, be a trusted technical advisor. So that goes back to bullet number one, where you will hopefully become an expert and understand well what it is that you're selling. Mm -hmm. And when you work with the wider marketing team, and here they probably mean, say, the go-to-market team that you know launches your product. Like for you know a more granular example, like when you need to explain to your social media marketing manager mm -hmm. uh, what your product is. And on social media, when you only have like 140 characters in a tweet, you're not going to be able to explain, you know, in great detail what your product is all about. Mm -hmm. So you need to, again, translate all these technical aspects into what's in it for me for a consumer so that then your social media marketing person um you know kind of gets the gist of it packages it into 140 characters and makes sure that you know all the copywriting principles and all that are included and you know your reader gets hooked mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay uh evangelize the cisco miraca vision uh at industry events okay evangelize you just gotta love these words <laughs> um, so every company has a, a vision a mission statement um you know a brand associated with your products basically you are um what's a great brand example you know when you're buying uh, a nike um shirt or shorts it's not just the shirts or the quality, right? You're buying the Nike brand, can do it, or, you know, just do it. You're buying Coca-Cola versus Pepsi for, you know, reasons not just related to taste. So same with the vision, you need to, you know, as a marketer, as a representative of your organization that um, uh, you are a customer facing person, either, uh, through your written material or like here at industry events, you need to, you know, project this vision. You need to know the, the messaging that your company stands by um, and be able to be representative of that message. So industry events, Cisco uh, hosts the, one of the biggest industry events, uh, Cisco Live. The global one um, is in the US. There is a number of these events in the regions. Um, what's going to happen now, I'm not sure. Probably like with all the other industry events that will happen virtually. But very, very often the marketing team uh, works the booth. So you have your space and um, you either have, you, you know, represent a certain area in your space, a product, a solution. You may be giving um, theater presentations or, you know, basically interacting with your audience face to face at events. So that's what's meant. Mm -hmm. So basically, again, coming back to number one, becoming a specialist at the product and then just adding on it uh, your the vision and mission and why you have to be so inspired and talk about the product to, to your customers at the events. Right. Okay. So the next one is build in-depth technical collateral uh, and tools for some of the largest enterprise security customer organizations in the world. Um, when it says build collateral, um, it means that you will take your messaging and all your blocks and um, I'm not exactly sure um, how, how this specific position will you know, collaborate with other marketing functions and who will do the building, but you will probably guide the creation of marketing materials. So marketing collateral is basically marketing assets like um, a, an overview document, like a one pager on what's your solution is all about. And 
um, exa other examples include um, a data sheet and at a glance um, overview um, technical webinar um, you can you can look it up online um, but you um, kind of map out when when your larger team maps out a digital journey um, or or not not a digital event like say at, at an event you you know hand out information in person or your sales provides information to your customers um, you identify at which point of the journey uh, you you know what kind of materials you provide so for someone who doesn't even know what your company does and what your product is, you probably wouldn't give them a case study that explains or like a customer testimonial. Uh, that will happen, you know, way down the uh, sales funnel when you're when your prospect is considering uh, maybe they're ready to buy, but they're not sure. Like, did your solution work for someone else? Then you know, you show them a customer case study. Uh, so these are examples of materials that you will be creating. And in larger companies, chances are that these will be created um, through agencies um, who will do the actual creative work, like who will, you know, put together a document. Uh, so you still do all the heavy, heavy lifting in terms of, you know, the content, but they will do... Um, basically pretty it up make, and your job is to make sure that um, everything stays on brand, all the colors um, and you know, you, you, you got the idea. And um, trying to see if I missed anything. Uh, collateral and tools. I have another it question yeah. regarding the tool, by the way. So when you are planning your content, uh, do you use like, or what uh, type of content management tool would you suggest to use or, or is used in the larger organizations? How do you keep track of like what content and when is going to be generated to the public? Um, so this, this is a twofold question. The content management system, how you decide what's going to be released to the public uh, are kind of different. So when it comes to releasing to the public is usually run with a launch manager. Um, and the, you know, there's, there, there are a lot of components involved and the planning usually starts like a year ahead of time. Um, and a company usually has an you know editorial calendar of all externally facing communications, all brand communications, and then every team that's responsible for a specific product or you know a product line, they have their own editorial calendars that you know, always go back to the, the, the master one. And for example, if there is like a major event on um, on the master editorial calendar, then you may or may not want to release your your launch associated with this event and so you kind of uh there's a lot of coordination basically going on with how how and when you communicate um usually there is a press release involved when it's something major or you know you you, you publish a blog or an industry um communication something like that um when it comes to content management systems, um, this this is a difficult question uh, because with, with larger corporations, um, it can get quite messy. Honestly, it's it's one of the challenge points of how to keep all the information you know easily accessible to people globally. And um, there is a whole team uh, within large corporations that deals with evaluating different um, tools that are coming out and deciding what should we invest in. Because these, are, these tools are quite pricey and you know, smaller companies can't really afford them. Um, so one of the most common tools is Box, um, Box.com. Um, a lot of content's managed there. 
um, companies use Smartsheet a lot. Um, that's more of a productivity tool, but um, you know also can serve as a content management repository. Okay, great. Thank you, Marie. Uh, we have spoken so much, and uh, we you've shared a lot. And uh, like I think the toughest part was the analyzing the positions because to me, like when I read the job description, sometimes it's just, I have no idea what they're asking. So I'm just like next, you know, to kind of like put in, find something that is I'm familiar with, but not just like ambiguous uh, bullet points. I think that oftentimes employers are struggling with this as well. Be well, one reason why is because they, might not necessarily know exactly what they're looking for. They know that they need help in some area. And your hiring manager, when hiring for your position, might, might not know about you know, the intricacies of what you will be doing. So he, wouldn't, he or she wouldn't necessarily know um, how exactly frame your you know, job your know, responsibilities bullet to bullet. So they're kind of giving you a general idea. And then um, if this is something that kind of catches your eye, you know, go ahead and apply. You'll have an opportunity to ask about each one of these bullet points in an interview. Um, keep in mind that when you are interviewing, you are interviewing them as well because you will be working there. You need, to, you need to feel comfortable with the people. You need to feel the vibe, the energy, um, you, know, you know, all those things basically. And that's another great reason why you should be interviewing uh, even if you have a job because interviewing when you have a job and the stability, uh, you feel a lot more comfortable, um, you know, not desperate to take, you know, whatever is out there. Um, and you know build your strength your know your value